The Daily Code Snippet. In our previous episodes about the history of CSS, we went over how the support of embedded fonts came with CSS2. At the time, only Internet Explorer supported this initial release, and there were only a few fonts with copyrights that allowed distribution on the web. These early fonts were EOT or Embedded Open Type from Microsoft and Monotype. Because EOT was proprietary, there was a move to release free web fonts and have a wider range of browsers to support them. This led to the release of TrueType and OpenType fonts, TTF, OTF, and eventually Microsoft was convinced to allow EOT to be royalty free. But by that time, there was a more widely used compression algorithm that EOT was not compatible with, so that led to the release of Web Open Font Format, or WOFF. Both TTF and OTF are larger in size and slower to load because they are not compressed. EOT is compressed and smaller, but since it is poorly supported by most browsers, it limits its use. WOFF loads faster than TTF and OTF because of compression and has wide browser support. WOFF2 is a newer generation of this format that is 30% compression gain over WOFF, but is not as widely supported as the original. SVG fonts were developed when support for the web fonts was not widespread. Currently, its support is only with Safari and Android. With SVG, glyph outlines are rendered as SVG or scalable vector graphic elements. SVG doesn't support font hinting. Font hinting provides additional information which allows the rendering of fonts at small sizes so they remain legible. So SVG is less useful for body text and with SVG, you can't select individual characters or words. So hopefully this explains why so many font file formats are needed with at font face so that the custom font will display properly across different browsers and devices. Presented by Designers Learn Code.